Welcome to the chapter 6 of React Quickly. In this screencast, I will walk you through and demo the project board with Reflux. So first of all, let's start with the folder structure. We have readme.md, which will explain you how to start the server and how to install the dependencies. Then we have gulp file. Gulp is the build tool to manage your assets and to package them. We will be using that to convert JSX to, H to, J to normal JavaScript as well. And then index.js, it's our backend Node.js server that uses Express.js. In Node modules, we have the dependencies. As you can see, we have Gulp, Express, and some of the middleware for the Express.js framework. Then the package.json has the metadata and our uh, list of our dependencies. And uh, the public folder has two folders, CSS and JS. And then it also has index.html. So the public folder, that's what we'll be uh, serving as uh, our browser application. And then if we dig deeper into the public slash JS, you would see app.js, that's the actual compiled file that we will be using in index.html and uh, app.jsx, that's our source file. Everything else, uh, our libraries, we use in React DOM and React version 0.14.2 and uh, we use in Reflux and I'm also using jQuery as an HTTP transport. I'm not using it for any DOM manipulation you can use super agent or request or any other HTTP agent. I figure out most of the people familiar with jQuery, so let's just use jQuery to make AJAX or XHR requests. So, how would you start the project? You would do it with either npm start, that would uh, launch node space index.js command, or you would use npm run dev if you're in a development mode. The development mode means this process, the gulp, will automatically watch for any file changes and restart both the server code and uh, recompile the browser code. So let's take a look and see how it looks in action. We have uh, our input field for the username. And then we have the text box for the message. And then I could either press enter or click on the post and the message will appear in this table. So let's do it. I see the message and uh, if I click refresh, the message is still there. So that means the data is persistent. Before we start implementing our message board, I wanted to show you the package.json file. So uh, it has scripts. As you already seen, we can use npm start or we can use npm run dev, which will launch our local gulp copy. And the way it's installed, it's right here. So all you need to do is just type npm install or npm i and uh, NPM will go ahead and take this list of depend dev dependencies and uh, normal dependencies and put them in the node underscore modules folder. Take a, let's take a look at the gulp file. It's uh, pretty much, it's very simple. It has only one task default. So that's what happens when you launch gulp without any parameters, without any options. It will launch the default task. And then I'm using React to transform JSX into JS. I'm using Watch to monitor for any file changes in the JSX. And I'm also using Nodemon to monitor for my backend files. Let's move to the index.html file. We start uh, in the head with uh, imports. Obviously, we need jQuery to make our AJAX or XHR requests. We also need React and React DOM and Reflux. We'll be using Reflux for the data flow and uh, as our data store. I have, I have, uh, have some uh, styles. 
custom styles in addition to the Twitter bootstrap styles and then the typical Twitter bootstrap scaffolding um, using container-fluid, raw fluid and uh, our, rend our React components will be rendered into this container. Just remember id equals message dash dash board and then our application is coming from js slash app dot js so we'll be writing code in JSX, but we actually use in JS file because Gulp will build it for us. We continue with our board message board example using Express.js and Reflux and jQuery and React. This is obviously not a book on Express.js. I've wrote another book called ProExpress where I dive deeper into Express.js, but I just wanted to show you a few things in our index.js, which is a backend Node.js and Express.js server that will uh, enable us to save the data to the Mongo database. So this is the URL. This is how you connect to your local instance. If you connect to some uh, production or QA environment in a cloud, deploy it somewhere, that URL, you need to change it right here. Another thing is that I'm using body parser to get the data and to parse it from some string, URL encoded string or a JSON string into a normal JavaScript and Node.js object. Next thing I want you to, to notice is that I'm using Express static middleware to serve the static assets from the public folder. So this is the folder where our React files live and other, other libraries and other front-end files like CSS and uh, HTML. So if you change this folder, you can absolutely do that, but then also you need to change the public folder to something else. They need to be the same in order for this project to work. Then I have two endpoints, so it's a very small uh, server, but it's a RESTful server. In uh, the get messages, I'm uh, finding messages and just outputting it back using res.json. I'm using dot .find and dot .array, dot to .array. And then in the post slash messages, I'm submitting a new message and I'm using dot .insert. I'm also using the validation middleware to check that the name and the message, they're not empty. And then for any other routes or for any other URLs that come to the server, I would output, hey, the server does not support it. So that's it for the backend implementation.